Hello, and welcome to another Read Aloud. I am your lovely host, Mrs. Disney, and in today's Read Aloud, we are going to be continuing a Twisted Tale anthology. And in this reading, we are going to be reading The Rose and the Thorns. What if Aurora knew the truth about her curse? By Elizabeth Lim. The only thing that Princess Aurora hated more than being cursed was knowing that she was cursed. Every day and everywhere she went, someone would remind her that she'd been doomed since birth, that the great and evil fairy Maleficent had condemned her to prick the, her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel before the sun sets on her 16th birthday and die. Aurora really wished everyone would stop being so dire. After all, the good fairy Merryweather had watered down the curse significantly so that Aurora would only sleep, not die. Did she really need to be protected by bodyguards everywhere she went and be caged up in a drafty old castle? Sixteen years was such a long time to wait for something inevitable, terrible, and inevitably terrible to happen. Sometimes, secretly, she wished that her parents had sent her far away. She could have grown up as a peasant, away from Maleficent's prying eyes. She could have been free. But she knew that she wa that was a selfish thought. The king and queen would have missed her too much, and she loved her parents. She couldn't imagine a life without their daily lunches and dinners, without her mother teaching her the harp or how to dance. She couldn't imagine trying not to laugh at father as he tried to hide his burps during the royal dinners. What she resented, though, was how everyone treated her as if she were made of glass. She resented having to spend every afternoon learning how to protect herself from some some all-powerful, likely inevitable curse. Almost every day, Aurora suffered through magical protection lessons with the three fairies, Flora, Fauna, and Merryweather, who now lived in the castle and used their magic to place wards around the royal grounds. Her very first word had been careful instead of a normal mama or dada because it was the word she had heard most often. Careful, your highness, don't prick your finger on that fountain pen. Oh no, that hook is sharp. Careful, you might hurt yourself. Ironic that when Aurora, tu Aurora turned 13, Merriweather had decided she should take fencing lessons. A form of defense, the youngest fairy had said to convince the king and queen. The swords were wooden and dull, of course, but Aurora could have kissed Merriweather on the first day of her lessons. Three years later, she was far from an accomplished swordswoman, but she was relish. But she relished the time spent hacking at straw dummies and letting out her frustrations. Plus, it was the only of her. It was the only of her lessons that was outdoors, and it let her view the world beyond the castle walls, and spend some time with Philip. Be careful with that quill, her tutor warned breaking her daydream. The nip is sharp. You might, don't say it, prick yourself. Aurora sighed. It's a writing quill, not a needle. Even still, your highness, the future of our kingdom rests on your shoulders only one month ago. Yes, Aurora was aware of how much time there was before her 16th birthday. She was reminded of it every day. Every single subject in her parents' kingdom had been counting down the years, months, weeks, and days until their princess would be safe from Maleficent's horrible curse. 30 days, 20 hours, 15 minutes to go. Well, no one was more tired of it than Aurora herself. When she was sure that her tutor wasn't looking, she let out a loud gasp and dropped her quill with a dramatic thud. As inelegantly as she could, she crumbled off the chair and onto the ground. The tutor sighed. Your Highness, this isn't funny. Twice in a month is too much, even for you. A beat passed. Then another. Aurora! Her tutor knelt and shook her by her, the shoulders, 
Aurora didn't move. Your Highness? Oh, dear. Footsteps thudded against the rug as her tutor ran out of the room. Help! The curse! Her Royal Highness pricked! Aurora didn't bother listening to the rest. Once her tutor was gone, she sprang up and crept out the door. Looking out the window, she could see that the drawbridge was down. Just a few more corridors than, than the garden. She'd grabbed the disguise she stashed under the rose bushes, then skirt, then skirt past the guards to the porticulus. She got as far as the north wing, two halls before the garden entrance, before a familiar voice rang out from behind. Just where do you think you're going? The princess halted in her step. Merryweather. The fairy flew to Aurora's side. She was in her smaller form, which made her only slightly larger than a blue butterfly. Even still, Aurora could make out her crossed arms and furrowed brow. Why, Merryweather, Aurora put on her brightest smile. I was just going out for some air. In the middle of your writing lesson? What better time for a walk is there? Aurora said. I thought I saw the royal guards running up toward the lesson hall. Did you by any chance pretend to fall to your curse again? There was no use lying. Oh, Merriweather, I'm going out just for an hour. I'm almost 16. What harm would it do to have an hour to myself? I'm in lessons all day. Merriweather didn't look moved. If anything, she crossed her arms tighter. You are almost 16. That's the entire point. This is the time to strengthen our defenses. For you to lie low, keep hidden, and not draw attention. In one month, the curse will be broken. I've been keeping hidden for 16 years, Aurora countered. I might as well be a rabbit in a cage. Maleficent knows exactly where I am. At least she let me go, at least let me go out into the village. It's my fault everyone in this kingdom has to suffer through Maleficent's curse. I'll wear a disguise. Watch out for ravens. Aurora made a pleading look. Please. Everyone in the kingdom must hate me. They know it isn't your fault. Can't I at least go up to the ramparts and see them? Aurora paused. I heard my father say some of the villagers are unhappy that they can't make their own clothing. That they're living in rags. I could send someone to give them some of my clothes. I could give a speech from the balcony. I want to do my part. You'll do your part by staying put in this castle. You sound like flora and fauna, said Aurora. No, I don't. Do too. Just like that, Merryweather smiled. Just a little. Of the three fairies that had helped raise Aurora, Merryweather was the easiest to talk to. She didn't coddle Aurora as though she were a glass slipper that might shatter, nor did she snitch on Aurora whenever she ran off from her tutors. But she still could be stern, and she was as fiercely protective as the others. Very well, relented Merryweather. I suppose your tutor's already left. You can't go on a walk around the ballroom. But that's my offer, Aurora sighed. All right, good. I'll give you an hour before I tell Flora where you are. Aurora knew it was best she'd get. It was the best she'd get, and she hugged the fairy. Thank you. Not so fast, said Merryweather. I'm coming with you. Oh. Merryweather waved her wand and instantly changed to her normal size. Oh, you don't want to walk with your favorite fairy anymore? It's just that Aurora's mind reeled. Don't you have a meeting with mother and father? I thought you were strengthening the castle's defenses. It is only a month until my birthday, after all. You never remember my schedule, princess. What are you... Philip... Merryweather's expression turned coy. Are you meeting Philip? Aurora blushed. The fairy leaned forward and said in a low voice, Has he kissed you yet? Merryweather, he's just a friend. The fairy shrugged, but her eyes twinkled. She had a soft spot for Prince Philip. Remember how your curse gets broken. True love's kiss. True love's kiss. Those three words had haunted her ever since she was old enough to understand what they meant. How would she even know what true love was? A question she would tried asking the fairies multiple times, but they blustered half-formed responses. Aurora knew better than to ask again. Deep down, 
she worried she didn't have a true love. After all, she wasn't even 16 years old yet. But if she didn't have a true love and she fell to the curse, she'd stay asleep forever. When put that way, was Meriwether's adjustment all that much better than the original curse? Why a kiss? Aurora wanted to ask Meriwether, but the words that came out instead were, Why did you even bother telling me? Why not whisk me away so I can hide? Another kingdom? Or even the middle of the forest? At least I'd have animal friends to talk to. The king and queen couldn't bear the idea of giving you up, explained Meriwether for the umpteenth time. We told you the truth as soon as you could understand. That way, you'd have a better chance of defending yourself against Maleficent. Aurora sighed. For the past 16 years, she had studied every magical defense spell in the fairy's book, in addition to taking the fencing lessons. She'd even secretly learned some archery from Meriwether. She could spot a raven a mile away, but Maleficent had never come. Sometimes, Aurora even wondered if the curse was real. Where are you meeting Philip, anyway? said Meriwether, suddenly suspicious. I didn't see Samson in the stables this morning. Aurora swallowed. In the garden, she fibbed. He's probably been waiting for me. We were supposed to meet on the hour. In the garden, Meriwether repeated. Can I please go, said Aurora. I've practiced my spells, and Philip's got his sword. I'll look out for ravens, I promise. And we won't talk to anyone, not even the guards. Please let me go. I don't know. Please, Meriwether, it's not like I'm going out into town. Philip will be with you the entire time? Yes, but you know I can take care of myself too, thanks to your training in Flora's and Fauna's. Meriwether chuckled at the flattery. All right, only for an hour. If it weren't for this meeting, I'd come too. But be careful. Aurora nodded, her heart leaping with joy. I will.